Okay, now we're going to finish up these quadratic equations in one variable, and this time we're going to be talking about method number four for solving a quadratic equation, and that's going to be the quadratic formula. Here is your quadratic formula. This is a formula that you should learn and never ever forget it. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, of all of the methods that we've learned, method number one was factoring. For factoring, remember, it only works if your quadratic equation is factorable. Method number two is the square root method, which will always work. You just may have to worry with some crazy numbers sometimes. Then you have completing the square, and I would only recommend that one if your a is one. And then you have the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula will always work, no matter what your equation looks like. So in this first problem, the very first thing you want to do is make sure it's in standard form. Here's your standard form in case you've forgotten. So you want to make sure it's in that form first. So what we want to do is move the 1 over. So we'll have 6y squared minus 5y minus 1 equals 0. Now you're going to use a, 6 for a, negative 5 for b, and negative 1 for c. Plug it into this formula and then just simplify it. So x is equal to negative b, so negative of a negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 5 squared, minus 4 times a times c and that's all over 2a. Now you just simplify this as much as you can. So negative of a negative is a positive. Negative 5 squared is 25. 4 times 6 times 1 is 24 and 25 minus 24 is 1. 2 times 6 is 12. So we're going to have 5 plus or minus 1 over 12. This is equal to, well, 5 plus 1 is 6. 5 minus 1 is 4. So that's equal to either 1 half or 1 third. Those are your two solutions to this quadratic equation. Okay, so let's do the same thing for b. For b, we're going to have a is 1, b is 8, and c is 20. So we'll have t, huh, sorry about that over here, that should have been a y, huh? Okay, so we'll have t is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Eight squared is 64. Four times one is four times 20 is 80. So we're going to have 64 minus 80 and that'll be a negative 16. And two times one is two. Remember the square root of a negative is a, an imaginary number. So you have negative 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 is 4i all over 2. Okay, let's come back up here. Maybe I can squeeze it in on the scratch paper side. So if you notice, we have a 2 in the denominator. We also have a like term in the numerator. We ha Not a like term, sorry, a common factor. We could factor out a 4. But what I'm trying to do is reduce this 2. So all I want to do is factor out a 2. If I factor a 2 out, I'll be left with negative 4 plus or minus 2i, and that's all over 2. Well, now the 2 is reduced to 1. So you're just left with negative 4 plus or minus 2i.
Okay, here's an application problem for you. If we let h stand for the height at time t of an object, and we have this formula, where g, v sub 0, and h sub 0 are all constants, g is the force due to gravity, v sub 0 is the initial velocity, which the object has when time is 0, and h sub 0 is the height of the object when time is 0. We normally say that ground level corresponds to a height of zero. If t is measured in, t in seconds and h in feet, g is 32 feet per second squared, or 32 feet per second per second. If t is measured in seconds and h in meters, g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So it depends on the information that you're given in the problem as to whether you use this g or this g. Okay, so just keep that in mind as you work problems like this. Robert stands at the topmost tier of seats in a baseball stadium and throws a ball out onto the field with a vertical upward velocity of 60 feet per second. The ball is 50 feet above the ground at the moment he releases the ball. When does the ball land? Hmm, when does the ball land? That means when is the height zero, right? Okay, so we know that this height needs to be zero. So let's see if we can fill in the formula. Negative one half g. Well, we know g is one of these two. We're given feet and seconds. So we're gonna look at 32 feet per second squared. And then t squared. Well, we don't know that, do we? When does the ball hit the, or when does the ball land? So we're actually looking for t. And then we have v sub zero. v sub zero is the initial velocity. Do we know the uh, initial velocity? With a vertical upward velocity of 60 feet per second. So that would be 60 feet per second and that's multiplied by time plus your height. What's your height? Your initial height was 50 feet above the ground. Okay, just so it doesn't get too confusing, we really don't need to put all of these units in here. We can just put the numbers in there. So when I go to the next line, I'm gonna clean it up just a little bit. We're going to have negative 1 half times 32. That's going to give me a negative 16 t squared plus 60 t plus 50. Now what we need to do is solve this quadratic equation. The best thing to do in a case like this is to use the quadratic formula. So if you would like, there is a common factor here. You could um, divide everything by a 2 and that'll make your numbers a little bit smaller. So you'll have zero is equal to a negative eight t squared plus 30t plus 25. Okay, so let's use the quadratic formula. t is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four a c and that's all over to a let's simplify i think i'm going to run out of room again so t is equal to negative 30 plus or minus let's go ahead and punch all that in the calculator we'll have 30 squared minus 4 times negative 8 times 25 and that will give us 1700 and that's all over negative 16 okay does it want us to round to anything it doesn't tell us so let's just see what we get I'm going to type in negative 30 plus this over this and get an answer. Negative 30 minus this over negative 16 and get an answer. So, negative 30 plus 
the square root of 1700 all divided by a negative 16 is approximately negative 0 0.7 okay and then we're going to have the same thing so negative 30 minus the square root of 1700 all over negative 16 and that's going to give me approximately 4.5 now what do these numbers represent again this is the time that it takes the ball to land so can it land in negative 0.7 seconds can you go back in time it can't right so that means that it was it must be landing in approximately 4.5 seconds